you're watching Game Blazer on the highest gaming channel on the internet. And this is today in gaming history. Number one, Enter the Matrix. Developed by Shiny Entertainment and designed by David Perry. This game won the VGX award for best video game based on the TV show or movie in 2001. And the storyline is based around the Matrix Reloaded film with over an hour of original footage directed by Lily and Lana Wachowski. And from my own personal experience, I can tell you, that is over an hour. And that's a juicy one. I'm a diehard Matrix fan, so to me, it was epic. You feel me? So, since then, 1.2 million copies have been distributed worldwide. 58 million has been grossed domestically. Domestically is in America, for those who didn't pay attention to social studies. You dig? I got you. Just stay with me. Across the internet, average rating is about 7 out of 10. I personally think it's the she's and easy's. And it came out today. So happy birthday to Enter the Matrix. Skadoosh. Number two is Crazy Taxi. Developed by Hitmaker Studios, it was originally an arcade game released back in May of 1999 that sent ripples through the video game industry. A year later, Dreamcast's home entertainment system was blessed with a version of the game, and from that moment on, it shut shit down. A year later, it was ported over to all the major platforms that we're familiar with today, like the Playstations and the Xboxes and the GameCubes. And again, it shut shit down. The first installment laid the foundation for six more titles, tons of merchandise, cultural successes, and a myriad of peace awards all across the world, etc. etc. Surprisingly, there was talks of a crazy taxi film directed by Richard Donner, but failed to launch because of lack of plot elements, according to Movie Insider. Whatever the hell that means. A second attempt was made in 2003, but Nothing else since has surfaced. Seems that we may never see a crazy taxi film, which would suck. And if that's the case, I freaking quit. We're just gonna move on to number three. Endorsed by the Hoffman himself, Matt Hoffman, and published by Activision 02. Oh boy. It stood alongside Dave Mirra's Freestyle BMX and the Tony Hawk series. That is, until Tony Hawk started dropping titles like a pro wrestling promoter. Like, woo! Drip. On a bitch. Anyway, the action sports game was well liked by all, scoring an average 8 out of 10 on most web forums. And, you know, I was an action sports kid, so I liked it a lot. I'd play it all the time. Not nearly as much as Tony Hawk, but sometimes I like to kickflip on a bike instead of a skateboard. Or I like to do it on rollerblades. PlayStation had any options for your fancy. This is what I loved about PlayStation. The graphics were just terrible. Anyway, despite being totally kicked flipped out of existence by the Pro Skater series, amongst all of Activision O2's releases, only Matt Hoffman's BMX spawned the sequel. So I guess that's good for something, right? Let's move on to number 4. Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku for the Game Boy Advance Headaxe. Developed by Webfoot Technologies, Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku is the first in a trilogy of games based on the world famous anime. If you don't know which anime I'm talking about, I'm gonna need you to press pause right now and go dig your head under a rock and throw all of your belongings into the river and erase yourself from existence. If you ain't up on DBZ, you can't. Don't even subscribe. Anyway, online this game received mixed reviews, but within two years the game sold 630,000 copies and a whopping 16 million in the United States. That's domestically for those who didn't pay attention in social studies currently sits 42 on the list of highest selling Game Boy Advance games and going all the way back to the first Saiyan Saga you know and then carrying through all of DBZ series I think this is one of the most detailed games based on something from TV we've seen in a while and for that I thank you number five lastly we have the killing floor developer tripwire interactive now originally 
was only intended to be a mod for a level on Unreal Tournament 04 back in 05, but by popular demand, Tripwire decided to create a standalone title for the PC, powered by the Unreal Engine. And knowing that makes me want to go hunt it down, go hunt down the PC, put them together in one room, and isolate myself from society for a little bit. This survival horror game was later launched on Steam in 2012, and since then has been one of the top selling games on Steam, selling 3 million copies as of 2004. This game also won a couple different awards for best overall PC game and best expansion or downloadable content game from Voodoo Extreme Reader's Choice. So yeah, Killing Floor is killing the game. Happy birthday to thee as well. Yo, that was my video, cause that was today in video game history.